Hello, this is Steve. Welcome to your next edition of Highlights, our bi-weekly, or we try bi-weekly, uh, educational newsletter. It all depends on my traveling schedule and so forth, how frequently I can get these out. Anyway, what we're going to be looking at today is a little bit of flexibility with the candlestick signals. Now, uh, one of the basic candlestick signals are the engulfing patterns, and we should recognize this is a bearish engulfing pattern. That's a black real body engulfing hence the name, a white real body. So the bears are grabbing control of the market from the bulls, and this looks like a good signal to uh, for those a little bit more aggressive. I know not many of you sell short on the equity side, but for those who do, this would be a short, good uh, short sale because this bearish engulfing pattern would be confirming a little resistance area up here. And uh, for those who don't normally sell short in equities, uh, certainly a time to consider to take profits. Remember, uh, if you're long, one of the great things about candles is you could use it to exit. So even if you didn't enter a position with a candlestick signal, you certainly could use a candle signal to consider uh, exiting. And of course, whatever we're saying in the equity side is also true on the forex side. There are some nuances in the double and triple candlestick patterns, like the engulfing patterns in the evening and morning stars and so forth with forex as compared to non-forex. Uh, for those interested in our forex DVD workshop, you just you can contact Paul, uh, P-A-U-L, at CampbellCharts.com. But uh, what I wanted to focus on here is one of the great things about the candle signals is you could use it as potential support and resistance. So we have the high of the bearish engulfing pattern as resistance. But, you know, with this as a resistance area over here, you know, the, considering the recent high up here, what I mean by recent is the high prior to the bearish engulfing pattern, is up here, you're looking at maybe a 40 cents different. So for those who sell short on the bearish engulfing pattern, rather than having a stop here at about uh, uh, above 30.80, I would give it a little bit of leeway here to above $31. You know, wouldn't it be silly to get stopped out if you're short at 30.90, in other words, above the bearish engulfing pattern, only to have the market stall at this resistance area. Same thing here on the downside. Uh, the arrow here, the blue arrow, points to a bullish engulfing pattern, and we know, or should know, uh, for those who have taken my educational resources, the low of the bullish engulfing pattern should be a support area. And indeed, notice how nicely that worked to call the sell-off here. The sell-off in the bearish engulfing pattern stopped almost exactly at the low of the bullish engulfing pattern, and from there it rallied. But the same idea about being a little bit more flexible, uh, just as we would not have our stop out area here, or should not have our stop out area here around 3080, instead having it here. Same thing with this. While the law of the bullish engulfing pattern is support, what I would do is make it a support zone because these lows here at 2560, just rounding off, is only a few cents away from the lows of the bullish engulfing pattern. So rather than having this as our support area, our only support area, we would make this our support zone. I would call this S1 for our first support zone. And to get uh, additional support, we'd obviously have to go back further on the chart. So the concept here is if you have a candlestick signal like a bearish engulfing pattern or a bullish engulfing pattern, and you have a recent low or a recent high near those uh, levels, I would give it a little bit of flexibility to have that as my stop out area if you go long or short. Same thing here. In the uh, cash S&P, for those who have been following our comments in the S&P, uh, you know that once the market broke above this blue zone here, this blue resistance area on this session here, we then changed to, uh, we switched to change of polarity. Old resistance becomes new support. And by the way, this red horizontal line is a, a resistance area, minor resistance to me, but a reason why the S&P stalled over here with these spinning tops. By the way, this is not a shooting star because the lower shadow is a little bit too long. But the small real bodies gave us a hint that the bulls were losing upside momentum as did this upper shadow right near the resistance area. But nonetheless, we were looking at change of polarity, old resistance becoming new support, and it held here and it held here. But we were saying that even if the market did break under the change of polarity down here, uh, look how close these lows are. A lot of I shouldn't say a lot of times, but at times the low of a tall white candle becomes a support level, and that was successfully defended by the three candlestick lines here. So, although the market did break the change of polarity, old resistance becoming new support, 
we were saying our kind of a last gasp of short-term support instead of being down here, the bottom end of the support zone, because these lows were so close to here, we gave it a little bit of leeway to about the 1370 area, and so far that's holding. So once again, the concept is, yes, we could talk about change of polarity, old resistance becoming support, but if you have a recent low that held the support, I would give it a little bit of flexibility. So hope that's been helpful, and may the candles continue lighting your path to greater profits.